Finland Saga, Season 2, Episode 14. <laughs> this dude just shows up to get his wife. Episode 14, Freedom. Everyone just calm down. Nice to see you too. Also, he, he just... I don't know, he's been stabbed. Just doing all this. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! They had a kid. He's already possessed as it is. <laughs> Get on! He just killed a horse? Okay, good. Oh no, <laughs> he killed the horse. Killing humans is fine, but animals cannot endorse. Speaking of having no enemies, I mean, this really is just a circumstance thing, bringing it to a head. Oh yeah, and also I'm killing Lizard, which I'm still really torn up about. I knew he was going to say something like that. May as well be. No, no, I don't know. It's not your fight. It's noble, but let's all, we need to take a step back and figure out what the situation is. Thorfinn trying to spare him a terrible fate that he's lived. Good to see Snake in action. Okay, that alright, that that sounds reasonable. That sounds good. If you can pull it off. Ooh. Speed. Yes, we can see that. Thank you, lizard number two. He fights just like he looks. He's that good and he's that possessed and he's that driven. Hit him with the dull side of his sword. He's doing the, the Kenjin thing. That sounds like a deep breath. What a flood of mixed emotions for Aner. Jeez, a lesser man would have wanted to see Gar Gar Garter dead for his own interest. I guess it was a noble move, wanting to help Arnie to escape. But I mean, at the same time, some of that just feels to me like pain, 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 and shock, and not really knowing how to deal with it. Thorfinn is right. It didn't seem like a sound conclusion he had reached. He was just triggered into action. Garter doesn't know this yet. How could he, based on his life and this world? But I don't really think he has enemies here. It's a really tough bird too. What the hell? Do, how do you respond to this? What do you even do? This is your survival, right? This is your life. You live on this farm. It's your husband. I mean, I understand Snake's perspective on this. He's tasked with protecting this farm. Me too, as a viewer, I want to see Garter be given a second chance. But that's asking a lot. The implications of that are huge. That's not something to take on lightly. Wouldn't that mean that Snake is fighting the whole society, basically? This whole countryside? Uh, peace was nice while it lasted. We had a great couple of days there. What do you even say in this situation? Here it is. I think I know what it's bothering me about. 
Anders' reaction. It's kind of presumptuous. I think for a while he's had these grand visions of rescuing Arnheed. He's sort of put himself in the protector position of her, and there's something really sweet about that. But do we know like what she she wants in all this? Has he asked her what she feels? Does she want to leave? Is she ready for what that means? Does she want her husband to be free? Does she want to upset this whole society? Is she okay living life as an outlaw? There's so many things he's just presuming. And she's been really kind to him, but she's not really asking anything of him. He's a little bit over his skis in terms of his role with her. And again, I do get the sense that some of this is not motivated by pure altruism, but rather by just the overflowing of emotion that he doesn't know what to do with because he's hurt. Which is not to say at all there's nothing good about this gesture. I mean, he's a sweet man at heart, and he's being very self-sacrificial, but maybe to a fault. There's something so beautiful, I think, about being a, a pr protector, a provider, or whatever. But there's an asterisk there that the person has to want that from you. Otherwise, it's... It's a request, it's an ask, it's a burden, it's almost entrapment. And it runs the risk of being a little bit arrogant. Like, are you even capable of doing that? Are you strong enough to do that? Is it perhaps not you that need rescuing? Are your rescue attempts actually a plea, either to be rescued or for one's affections? <laughs> Dark clouds. It's interesting, <laughs> kind of dark interpretation of neutral Jing. Snake. Again, speaking of having no enemy, Snake is not your enemy. Task for Thorfinn. Also, I think a trap Einar's falling into is the Arnheit thing aside, looking at the issue of Garter, perhaps some of his sympathy is coming from the fact that they share a station. You know, he obviously sympathizes with slaves. That's a little bit risky. You don't want to be totally on someone's side just because you share the same station in life. Don't know who he is. Don't know what he's done. Just because someone has had a terrible life or a terrible set of circumstances doesn't mean they are worthy of being saved at the cost of many other people's lives. Especially Snake, who, as far as we've seen, I mean, I'm sure Snake has done terrible things in his life. He just has that better end feel to him. He hasn't been bad to them at all. He's taken some verbal shots at them for being slaves, but that's about it. In fact, in his way, it seems like he's protected them. So to wage this whole war on the basis of saving a slave's life, especially because it would be at the cost of other people's lives, feels a little bit rash and dubious. And to like th risk Thorfinn's life to throw Thorfinn into this? Because okay, of commerce or something? Please. Well, Sprinkle's last few days aren't boring. These are not dull. <laughs> I see where this is going. And probably just wanted to improve their station for their families. It's a tough spot. It adds something really significant and extra to know that Garter kind of played a role in inviting this tragedy. It wasn't just like Vikings showed up and took them. Although well, the men are here, just not the same men. And of course, burning commences immediately. Let's burn it all. Why burn at that point? I mean. <laughs> Oh, but it's not I'm sure he's dead. He's just taken away. He can still be out there. One silver lining in this story. It's terrifying. I mean, just look at him. Kettle's having a third son he can be afraid of. Oh my god, ain't her. This is blow after blow. Oh. Good luck with that. No. I don't know, man. Aner's kind of too woven up into this whole thing. Alright, I'm not judging. I get it. But there's a lot of danger there. I don't know. I don't know. She's put in a lot of work trying to be practical. It's only so much you can force yourself to over override your, your feelings, your instincts. I don't know.
ケティルは娘を守るために戦いも辞さない覚悟だった。娘が嫁いだ日。知らせを聞いて駆けつけた時にはもう何もかも焼き尽くされた後だった。すごいデアだ She's carrying one of the heaviest burdens. Tough moral calls all around, especially for Arnheed. Sverkel's speech really interesting too. His situation not enviable. Hard to know what the right call is there. Also pretty amazing that he's telling Arnheed this. It, if I'm understanding right, kind of encouraging her to follow her heart and do what she feels is right, despite the fact that she's carrying his grandkid. I wonder if that isn't a big part of the rifts that formed between Kettle and Sverkel. Also maybe reinforcing Kettle's feelings of powerlessness in the world. I think it does add a very important color to know that Garter kind of started or was responsible or helped launch this the tragedy that befell Arnhade in her, her village. I sympathize with him too. He's trying to make his lot better and he's trying to make sure that he can defend himself, that his village is safe, nominally for his family and you know for other people as well, but that leading him into the storm, as we're calling it, to the point where he's just this demon now. But I understand why Arnhade would still love him for that. You know, it was maybe misguided. It was the wrong choice in hindsight, it would appear, but it didn't seem like there was real malice in the decision. It, it seemed like it came from good intentions at least. And then, you know, he, here he is again coming back for her, this surreal creature, right as she had basically given up and settled into her lot in life on this this farm. I don't blame her for being called back, especially since she's not here willingly, voluntarily. Like Sverkel, her path seems to be one of just endure for the sake of peace. Just accept where you are, do nothing. And there's something great about that too, but also incomplete. You can compare this with a risk I've been thinking about for Thorfinn, where Thorfinn now wants to be peaceful. But as I was asking a couple episodes ago, does that mean just kind of burying your head in the sand? Or does that mean taking a sand in a way that does your best to ensure no loss of life? It's also no good if you are taking a stance on something, but yet have no power to preserve it or protect it. And therefore are just kind of buffeted around by the winds of life and the whims of others, including evil people. That seems to be where Arnheed is. What she wants, what she'll end up settling on, hard to say. But I think this represents a step more towards her own personal agency and what she wants out of her life. Notably for me, I feel like it doesn't involve Aner at all. He's kind of supplanted himself in this. I wonder how that relationship will pan out as the episodes go on. It's also crazy to think that this drama is happening. <laughs> but like, Canute is coming, right? Canute is coming with an army. So they got to get their stuff together as soon as possible. They're not going to have this luxury for long.